Uh, good morning everybody and you're all very welcome to the um, to this meditation uh, with the Oblate Fathers. I hope you're all enjoying this fine weather that we're all enjoying here in Dublin and make most of the sunshine while it lasts. Uh, my name is Mary Murphy and I, I work with the Oblate Fathers here in Bluebell Parish. I'm a member of the Legion of Mary and I have been here for over 50 years. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. God, our Father, pour out the gifts of your Holy Spirit on the world. You sent your Spirit on the church to begin the teaching of the Gospel. Now let the Spirit continue to work in the world through the hearts of all uh, who believe through Christ our Lord. Amen. And today we take the Gospel reading from St. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 24 to 30. When a man was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowd. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, uh, the thought is uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit for today is fortitude. With the gift of fortitude, we overcome our fear and are willing to take risks as followers of Jesus Christ. A person with courage is willing to stand up for what is right in the sight of God, even if it means accepting rejection, verbal abuse, or even physical harm and death. Today, in this beautiful weather, many of us are familiar with the many weeds growing in our gardens and how to take them from our beautiful flowers. Sometimes we are tempted to get rid of the garden and just plant a lawn instead. However, this would deprive ourselves and our community of the beauty of nature and the various colours of the seasons so that we have the courage to continue planting. As we enjoy the many trips to the seaside, we look at the tide as it comes in and goes out. And when the tide is out, on one side of the planet, it is in elsewhere. This image comes to my mind as I think how it, in certain parts of the world, faith and religion seem to have vanished, while in others there seems to be a flourishing. But if I may come back to the image of the coast, have you ever seen the rocks and clusters of rocks that are scattered along the coast? They have a great value. They withstand the storms and tides, but also act as markers for those who've been swept out by the tide or just followed it out. They also help you know where the tide is coming in or out. In these times of worldwide pandemic, we need to be people of courage, guided by the Holy Spirit to give witness to the gospel. But even at a more local level, people need those who stay faithful and provide an outstanding example. They may drift off with the outgoing tide, 
but deep down they know they need God and the values and hopes of the church. So those who remain faithful, not in a loud demonstrative way, but in a gentle, quiet and persevering solid way, are reassurances to those others who may have lost some confidence or are afraid of losing face with their friends, or who may just be like that man who once said to me, to be honest, I'm just lazy. Recently in Ireland, we had the case of a young teenager who went adrift on a small inflatable raft. A massive search was launched. But as the time wore on and hope faded, one fisherman have engaged the winds and tides, felt that if she was anywhere, she might be found near a certain boy. He had the courage, when everyone else had given up, to continue searching. That is where she was found clinging to it. When people are adrift, they need firm anchors to hold to them. That is our task, to be firm and reliable and waiting to help that lost soul. Let me end with this thought. The going out of the tide always ends. There's a period in which it is hard to see if the tide is still going out or on the turn or coming back in. This is particularly hard for those down at sea level and can catch people out. But those perched on a rock are in a better position to note the change and make provision. Let us have the guidance of the Holy Spirit and be available to those in need. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Goodbye now and enjoy your good day.